Hey guys, Jason Scudelaire from ZPP, and in front of us we got a Mustang II Corvette style spindle bearing brake setup. And, and I got Danny Nix here to go over everything, and uh, we're going to start with the bearings. Right, so we have the, the three different hub bearing assemblies that you see in front of us here. This covers essentially every bolt pattern that's out there. Um, five on four and a half, five on four and three quarter, which would be your Chevy and your Ford car patterns. Then we got five on five, five on five and a half, which is your Chevrolet Ford Dodge truck patterns. And then the six on five and a half, which is your Chevrolet truck pattern again. So you got all the wheels taken care of. Right. Let's talk a little bit more in depth on the bearing itself. So these bearings are way bigger than the C5, C6 Corvette stuff ever was. This is really just like a C7 Corvette, which is the, currently the biggest, strongest bearing that they're making out there. Um, the big differences are they're ball bearings, not tapered roller bearings, so there's way less friction than a Mustang two spindle would have traditionally had. Um, and then these ball bearings are actually really large races that are pushing the installation envelope. There's like very little space internally big massive races for the ball bearings. The preload is factory set, so you don't have to worry about adjusting the wheel bearings, making, making any mistakes in there. You don't get dirty in the process and doing it. These will maintain the bearing preload when they're cornering at over 1G on the racetrack. Um, the low friction characteristics, it's just really an all around solid high performance hub. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, moving on to the spindle, looks like we got a uh, drop and a standard height spindle. Right, so these are uh, Mustang 2 geometry in 2 inch drop and in the stock ride height. One neat feature about what we do to make all of this work is that we machined the hub face down an extra half an inch and then the caliper. And a part of all these spacers is that when we put this together, if you use all the spacers, you can put this in the traditional Mustang 2 track width offset. And then you can start taking some spacers out between the behind the rotor or behind the hub and pull them in a quarter or a half inch per side. So you can narrow the track width by a total of one inch. Well, that's a pretty neat uh, addition, especially for people who have a little track with maybe a little too wide and they're getting tire to fender clearance issues. Bringing that in a quarter or a half inch is, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it could it feel like a mile when you got a tire rubbing. So we've gone over the spindles, gone over the hubs. Let's get into the brakes. So these are CPP's Corvette brakes. These are basically like a C5 Corvette, 13 inch diameter. You need a 17 inch wheel to get around the, the bigger size. Corvette friction mounting points, everything really is, is just like a Corvette, except these are CPP's calipers. And we do a little bit different. We added a second bleed screw. There's one top and bottom, so there's no more left to right. It's always universal. Can't mess up that installation. You cannot screw that installation up. Correct. So why did you guys kind of use the platform of the Corvette style hubs and spindles and brakes? So this is the, our latest in the whole line of, of Corvette style of spindles out here. Um, the main reason was upgrades. You can go bigger than the 13 inch brake. This is a great performance brake, but if you wanted more, there's a lot of options available in the aftermarket. Sure. And because it's Corvette platform, they all really just bolt on, just like they did on the factory Corvette. Um, another neat feature about that is that because we're using the Corvette hub in the kit, when you go to whoever to buy your other brake kit, they don't have to supply a hub that was traditionally on a Mustang too. So you take out those hubs and the bearings and, and that part of the kit, and that really is almost the same price as just buying the spindle and the hubs from us. That's awesome. So they, they kind of pay for themselves just going into the bigger brake kits. All right, Danny, say I'm the guy that's already got a nice brake package from the aftermarket and all I want to do is upgrade my spindles and the hubs. Now, can I buy these separately? Yes, to answer the question, you don't have to buy everything. You can buy the spindles with the hubs, or you can buy actually just the spindles, and with those that come with all the spacers that you need, and you can use your own hub if you have some special hub that you like, whatever brand, or you could even buy just the hubs. Price point then. What we've talked about today, what's this gonna cost me? So regular retail price for everything, which is a set of hubs, the spindles, all the spacers, and the brakes, along with the stainless steel brake hoses, everything that you need for your kit is $649 regular retail. Wow, $649, you get a quality kit. That being said, if you're ready to get out there, you're ready to throw those quality parts on at a great price, make sure you get to classicperform.com.